This is a continuation of my last video, and we weren't quite done with the previous proof. So if you remember, we were at this point, and so instead of saying sine to the fourth, I wrote out sine squared times sine squared, and I grouped sine squared over cosine squared, and then I was left with just a sine squared, and I know sine over cosine is tangent. So this is going to be tangent squared alpha times sine squared alpha, which is exactly what we were supposed to prove on this side. So this is where I'll draw my line all the way down. I'm sure there's probably an easier way to have proved this, but um, there is so many ways that you can do these uh, that it doesn't really matter if they're long or short or elegant or not. So now let's take a look at this, um, this particular problem. Well, one of the hints on page 197 is to actually perform the indicated operation, and the indicated operation here is subtraction. So we need a common denominator, which is really nice because the, one of the other hints on that same page is to multiply by your um, conjugate. So uh, I'm doing both. I'm going to multiply by the conjugate so that I find a common denominator. All right, so 1 minus sine of alpha over 1 plus sine alpha times 1 minus sine alpha over 1 minus sine alpha. So this is a lot like chapter 6. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply these out, and I get 1 plus 2 sine of alpha plus sine squared of alpha over 1 minus sine squared alpha minus 1 minus 2 sine alpha plus sine squared alpha over 1 minus sine squared alpha. All right, so now when I, um, let's actually combine this into one fraction, so I have to remember to distribute that negative in front to all the terms in the second fraction. So I get, when I do that, I get minus one plus two sine alpha minus sine squared alpha and everything is still all over 1 minus sine squared alpha. But before we move past this, I want you to notice that this is going to be sine over cosine over cosine, and this is going to be 1 over cosine. So I'm really going to be looking for <clears throat> this in my final answer. So keeping that left, that right hand side in mind, I need cosine squared in the denominator. So I'm going to change this. This is an alternative form of one of my Pythagorean identities. I'm changing that to cosine squared alpha. Okay, so what's going to reduce out here? My ones reduce out and my sine squareds reduce out. So two sine of alpha plus two sine of alpha is four sine of alpha over cosine squared alpha, and that's exactly what I had written on this side over here. So I'm not really supposed to work the right-hand side, so I'm going to get rid of it. So now I'm going to kind of split this up a little bit, times sine of alpha times 1 over cosine of alpha times cosine of alpha, and you can see there's my tangent and there's my secant. So I get 4 tangent of alpha secant of alpha, which is exactly what I was supposed to get over here. All right. So now let's move on to the next problem. I think in this problem it's kind of obvious which side um, is more complicated. I think the right-hand side is more complicated. And I want you to notice on the left-hand side that everything's in terms of sine or cosine. In this case, it's cosine. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the problem off by just 
changing everything into sine and cosine. Um, that's another hint that's on page 197. So cosecant is 1 over sec um, sine squared. So cosecant is 1 over sine. Cotangent is cosine over sine minus 1. <clears throat> and if you take a look, this denominator and this denominator are sine squared. So I'm going to change the 1 to have the same denominator as sine squared so that we can combine everything into one fraction. I just think it makes sense to try and do that. All right, so 1 is going to be sine squared theta over sine squared theta. All right, so I know on the other, on the left-hand side, everything's in terms of cosine. So when we combine this, maybe after we combine, we can look into turning these sine squareds into cosines, right? And I know that we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. One of the equivalent alternative forms is sine squared theta equals cosine 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I can replace 1 minus cosine squared theta um, with sine squared theta. So I get, when I do that, cosine theta minus, and remember substitute in parentheses so that you don't forget to distribute that negative. All right, I'm going to erase the mark I did on that right-hand side. We're not really supposed to be um, changing it or writing anything over there. So when I distribute that negative, I get this. All right, so now the only thing I can think of doing is factoring. This is a trinomial in the numerator, and this is, you know, um, the difference of squares, a squared minus b squared. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, try factoring. Well, I, I guess I have to simplify the numerator first. 2 minus 1, so this should be 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cos... Now it's a trinomial, Mrs. Peterson. All right, but the denominator is 1 plus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta. Now I'm going to try and factor. So I'm going to leave it in this form. I'm going to do 1, um, this should be minus cosine theta squared, right? Because this is in the form of a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And that, what we learned in chapter 5, factors into a minus b squared. So one of these 1 minus cosines is going to cancel. Right? It's going to reduce out. So one of those reduces out, and now I have the left-hand side. I've accomplished my goal in verifying this trigonometric identity. Let's go back up here and finish this off. So I got 1 minus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. Okay, and there's our identity. Okay, this is going to be the last one we do, and it looks really hard, but I'm hoping it's not. So when I look at this, obvious which side's the harder one. The left side is harder, so that's the one we're changing. We're going to try and get to the right-hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and distribute because that's what it looks like I should do. Um, if this was algebra, that's exactly what I'd do. I would distribute. So I'm going to distribute to get, to get this. All right, so now what can I do? Well, 
One of the things that I notice is sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha. They're not next to each other, but we can always rearrange these terms like we can in an algebraic expression. I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So I'm going to change this to 1. And that's what I usually do when I see that in any of my expressions. So then I'm going to go ahead and simplify these. I know cotangent is cotangent is cosine over sine, and tangent is sine over cosine. All right, so when I simplify that, I get one of the sines reduces out, so I get sine alpha cosine alpha, one of the cosines reduce out, minus, doesn't matter which way we multiply, so to make it match the other term, I'm going to do that. Then you're going to notice these reduce to zero, sine cosine minus sine cosine is zero. So I'm left with 1 plus the cotangent squared of alpha, and that looks like one of my Pythagorean identities. So I'm going to replace it with cosecant squared of alpha, which is exactly what we were supposed to get over here. So you can see that while it, we started off with a problem that looked really horrible, it was not really all that horrible. It took us one, two, three, four, five, six steps to do this verification. All right, so that's kind of how I want you to work all of your problems on your homework. Again, feel free to come and go during the video as you wish.